told The rockin' itis has got my soul I've been rockin' and rollin' till the break of dawn I wonder if my baby is still at home You get a line, I get a pole Honey To the crawl dad hole Honey Baby mine Yonder come a man A sack on his back Honey Yonder come a man A sack on his back Hi, cats and kittens. Welcome to Rockinitis. My name is Michael Wilmore, and my special guest here is Rob Frith. And uh, I'm going to say the usual thing about your record store. Oh, Where yeah. is it? And <laughs> yeah, it's know. on Main Street between 19th and 20th in uh -huh. Vancouver. And um, you sell all kinds of things related to rock and roll. And yeah, and music in general. CDs, jazz, everything. Oh yeah, jazz. Uh, you know, folk, blues, mm -hmm. rock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything pretty much. And um, records, CDs, old concert posters, books, magazines, anything, you know, anything music related. Okay. And uh, it's a great store, probably the best in Vancouver, I must say. And the guy that we're going to feature now is blues, in the blues category. But oddly enough, he's a white guy. Yeah. But he's yeah. like ultra authentic. Oh, yeah. His name is Troy's Key, and he was born in Louisiana in 1937. And he was born in a very small house, 15 miles from civilization. He's the son of white sharecroppers, and his dad had records by Duke Ellington and Patty Page and Count Basie and the Four Aces and the Crew Cuts, right. people like that. So he heard music a lot at home. But uh, it wasn't until he ended up uh, catching TB, and he ended up having a rib, or a couple of ribs actually, and one lung removed, and he ended up in hospital and he was convalescing in Louisiana. That uh, he went to, while he was recuperating, he spent a lot of time in the library at the hospital. Yeah, and people would donate records to the hospital. And mm -hmm. So he heard a lot of blues records, Lightning Hopkins and Sonny Terry, Brownie McGee and things like that, mm -hmm. and started developing a taste for blues. In fact, he couldn't wait to get out of his hospital bed and walk down the hall to the library to get to those records every day. <laughs> you were saying he, he grew up in a small house? Yeah. His dad ended up working for the railroad and they actually moved into a boxcar. <laughs> oh, that's And right. they actually lived in a boxcar. Yeah, they lived so in a boxcar. So that must have been a real small. <laughs> so he had a, a, a kind of a less than stellar background in Louisiana. Yeah. And it's uh, like a real hot, uh, the place is just unbelievable uh, humidity. It's like living in a sauna. Yeah. I've been there, I worked there, uh, I worked for about four weeks or so, uh, cleaning up an oil spill. Oh, as you a, told as me it <laughs> Well, they gave you that thing for killing the snakes that were going to be... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, uh, it was like, uh, hey, Wilmore, uh, you take this scythe and you go down the end of that levee and chop up all them snakes. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, I, I trudge off and I didn't have the heart to kill the snake. Yeah. And I just said, shoo, shoo. <laughs> and then they would bug her off into the water. Anyway, oh, finally yeah. it occurred to me, there were so many snakes around because we were working in the swamp. Yeah. And what had happened was a guy that worked for Texaco had gone down the end of the levee and he set his oil pump at 300 barrels or something to fill up his, his, the back of his truck. Right. He fell asleep and it never shut off and it just kept going. Right. So all the oil spilled out. When he woke up, there was like, you know, hundreds of barrels of oil in the swamp. Yeah. So they hired a bunch of guys off the street to help clean it up. I was one of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so I go down and the, 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 I tell all the snakes to shoo, shoo. And then suddenly it occurs to me, are these snakes, do they bite you? Are they poisonous? <laughs> so I said to the guy, um, these snakes, what kind of snakes are these? Oh, those snakes, they're water moccasins. <laughs> I said, uh, are they poisonous? 
Oh, you're damn right they're poisonous. <laughs> I said, well, if they bite you, what happens? You die. <laughs> so I said, well, how long does it take you to die? He says, about an hour. I said, how long's the hospital? About an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys in Louisiana, it's very hot, humid. They have a slow, languid way of talking. And uh, <laughs> I remember once I had these gumboots on, and the guy wanted me to go down and move this log. Yeah. I said, uh, the water's all full of oil, and, I, I, and I'm clean and everything. He says, uh, Wilmore, he says, you had not done but five minutes of work since you've been on this crew. Now you get down there and hit that oily mud, or you hit that oily road. <laughs> so anyway, so I went what to, was it? <laughs> so I went. I had you to went to the log. Yeah, okay. yeah. I went to the log, and it went right over my boots, and I didn't like it one bit. But no. anyway, they talked very slow and lazy and everything else. Troy's key. He's from Louisiana. He's got the laziest voice yeah. you ever heard, and his band is a black band, and the first song we're going to play here is called I've Got a New Car, and uh, this is Troy Ski and the Rhythm Rockers, and he says in the lyrics, he says, you know the man come and tried to take my pretty car back? Well, my old lady tried to tell me not to get a brand new Cadillac. Next time I buy a car, I'm going to buy one I can afford, and when I say afford, I mean a Ford. <laughs> <laughs> so J.J. Malone, who was in the band, yeah, was he like? Well, was it was it uh, Troyce and him? Like we were partners. They were something? the front men for the yeah. rhythm rock. Yeah, so because I know that they seem to write all the tunes. Especially yeah, Malone. like Troyce Key sings a couple of songs, then J.J. Malone sings a couple of songs. Yeah. Now J.J. Malone is good, but he's not great. Troyce yeah. Key is great. Oh yeah. I mean, he's a lot better singer uh, than the other guy. So we're not featuring the other guy. Yeah. But anyway, um, it says. Um, uh, you know, stuff to do with the song, it's, it's done in this kind of lazy uh, Louisiana delivery. And the album came out on an English label, oddly enough, in 1980. And uh, it was put out by a guy called uh, Peter Scherster. He's an Englishman and he financed both of the Rhythm Rockers albums on his own Red Lightning record label in 1980 and 82. And oddly enough, later on, he drowned while he was on holiday in Morocco, swimming on the coast. So there's very strong undercurrents there on the shore, uh, off Tangiers, and the owner of the record label died and, you know, got drowned. So uh, anyway, this is the uh, first of two albums that Troyce Key was involved in on an English record label called Red Lightning. Troyce Key and the Rhythm Rockers. You know the man come and take my pretty car back. Why? Well, my old lady tried to tell me not to get a brand new Cadillac. Well, Next something. time I buy a car, I'm gonna buy one I can afford. What you mean? And when I say afford, mm. I mean afford. I got a new car. I got a new car. I got a new car. Okay, Troy's Key is the only white guy in the group, and he's, oddly enough, you know, just so authentically black sounding, it's yeah, astonishing. So, so it's, he'd be that one right there. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to pick him up. Um, yeah, we were just talking off air that the, uh, this album was recorded in 1980. Yes. And it sounds like it could be recorded in 1958. Yes. Anyway, it's a, a wonderful band, a real sort of sneaky sound. Yeah. Uh, and it's got a kind of, a, because of Troy Key's vocal, which is very lazy Louisiana sounding, and he kind of just sort of undulates along, and it's just got this kind of really cool rhythm oh, yeah. to it and everything else. Anyway, Crawdad Hole, and I Got a New Car, Troy Key and the Rhythm Rockers, Red Lightning Label, 1980. And as I was mentioning, when he was uh, convalescing in the hospital back in the 50s there, when he first got into blues, or discovered that that's what he liked, uh, he had a lung and some ribs removed while recovering. He spent a lot of time in the hospital library, and uh, records had been donated to the hospital, records by blues singers, 
like Lowell Folsom, Sonny Terry and Brownie McGee, Johnny Otis, and Lightning Hopkins. So Troyce picked up a guitar and began to practice. And uh, one of the albums that he really liked a lot was, uh, it was actually a, a, the original single release of this album here by Lightning Hopkins. It says, uh, Lightning Hopkins strums the blues. And this was originally released on a single that was in the library at the hospital on 78 RPM. And it didn't actually make its LP debut until 1959 on this album here. This is Katie May Blues by Lightning Hopkins. And his real name is Sam Hopkins. He was born in Centerville, Texas, 1912. Died of cancer in Houston, Texas, 1982, age of 69. I actually saw Lightning Hopkins at uh, Simon Fraser University Auditorium. Oh, yeah. And he was absolutely wonderful, and it's one of the best things I've ever seen in my life. Really? I was as far away from him as I am from you, wow. and he was absolutely fabulous. He was wearing an iridescent blue silk suit and a ginormous cowboy hat, and he was just extremely entertaining, affable, likable as hell. And his music was just fabulous. I know he played in Vancouver several times, yeah. but I'd never... That never was the time him. I saw him. I'll never forget it. And um, anyway, um, uh, he, this song, it goes, uh, uh, Yes, I give that woman everything in the world she needs. That's why she don't do nothing but lay up in the bed and read. Whoa, just like boys, she's got oil wells in her backyard. <laughs> you never hear her hooping, hollering, and crying, and talking about these times being hard. So when he says the line, and, and especially when Troyce Key does his cover version of it, he sort of goes, yeah, just like she got oil wells in her bag, you yeah. <laughs> He just sort of kind of lazily. That's, that's Dion actually like, uses that same line. Oh, really? In Clean Up Your Own Backyard, that oh, okay. song. He actually says that. And he was a huge Lightman Hopkins okay, fan Okay, that's where well. he got the line. Yeah, for anyway, sure. Anyway, great song. Original issue on an old 78 in the library when Troy's Key was convalescing. But uh, this is the LP later reissue of it. Yeah, you know I try to get that woman everything in the world she needs. That's why she don't do nothing but lay up in the bed and read. You know she walk just like she got oil wells in her backyard. Yes, you never hear that woman who been hollering, crying, and talking about these times being hard. <laughs> Yes, I give that woman everything in the world she needs. And that's why she don't do nothing but uh, lay up in the bed and read. Wow, just like boy, she got all wells in her back. Never hear one who be hollering and crying, talk about these times being hard. Well, as a real Lightning Hopkins fan, I hate to say it, but. I'm going to say it. Yeah. I like the Troyce Key version oh, yeah, better. For sure. <laughs> but those 40s blues ones were a little sparsely produced. And stuff, yeah. but it, it's just a fuller sound with But the he's Troyce. I just love his vocal, though the delivery is oh, yeah. so lazy. I mean, it's so Louisiana. Yeah. And uh, anyway, Lightning Hopkins, really great artist. Going to show a couple of uh, great albums by him here. Um, his Gibson J160 guitar is on display at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland, Ohio. He's number 71 on the Rolling Stone magazine's list of the top 100 greatest guitarists of all time. So he's an extremely inf influential kind of guy. And his all-time biggest hit, and in my view, his greatest recording ever, 
was the original version of Mojo Hand, which was produced by Bobby Robinson. Now he's uh, done other versions of it. I uh, got a couple of other versions by it. They're nowhere near as good as the version with uh, produced by Ro Bobby Robinson on the Fire record label. This is the original LP featuring uh, Mojo Hand. It's like three minutes of just fabulous blues with lightning playing some of the fastest guitar you ever heard. It's just wonderful stuff. Anyway, we're featuring a guy here called Troy Key, who was a, a white artist, oddly enough, but he surrounded himself with black culture, and uh, basically all his friends were black, and he sounds black on the records, and he's just an amazing guy. And after he got out of the hospital, uh, he began playing in clubs in 1956 around the Louisiana area, and then he gravitated over to the West Coast, and he cut a demo in 1958 and took it to Hollywood where he was signed by Warner Brothers Records. They did three singles on him and they put together a fantastic studio group to back him up, featuring none other than Eddie Cochran on lead guitar. And apparently it's the first time a white uh, blues singer was ever, s or, or uh, a first time a blues singer was ever signed to Warner's. Yes, that sounds right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he was white, so I guess they thought it'd be all right. Maybe blues. that's what it was, yeah. Anyway, th this picture here of Eddie Cochran, this is the, the exact same picture that inspired Brian Setzer of the Stray Cats to take up the guitar in the first place. Really? He saw this album in a used record bin, and he just stared at it for about a minute and said, I want to be exactly like that guy. Well, that's, that's so cool because um, when he did the soundtrack for uh, La Bamba, Okay. Uh, Eddie Cochran's, I think, family gave him that guitar. Oh, he got Eddie Cochran's yeah, guitar? that's right. Ooh. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Anyway, here's the, the original photo that that's taken from. Uh, the full photo uh, shows Eddie Cochran in full stride, uh, you know, doing just an amazing solo, I'll bet, live on stage. And the very first record ever by Troyce Key uh, was called Baby Please Don't Go. Now this was years ahead of the hit version by them in the 60s. When, when did that come out? 64. Yeah. 64. And this, or maybe 65. 64, I think. And this is like uh, six years previous to that. And you can get it on an album here called uh, Rockabillies. And there's no photo of Troy's Key or anything like that. But well, let me get the album out of it first. And uh, it's got uh, three, the top sides of his three singles that he did for the Warner Brothers record label. This is Baby Please Don't Go, one of the first versions of it ever. This is the very first single by Troyce Key, and he apparently learned it from an, uh, a record that was in the library in the hospital by Sonny Terry and Brownie McGee. Troyce Key, Baby Please Don't Go. Don't you call my name? Don't you call my name? Why don't you call my name? Don't you call my name? Why don't you call my name? You got me way, way down, down here when, when the ball unchained, baby. Please don't go. Tell me about it, Brian. Baby, please don't go. Baby, please don't go. Leave it there. That's uh, Sonny Terry and Brownie McGee doing uh, a version of Baby Please Don't Go, which was recorded a couple of years later. 
than the single that Troye's Key would have learned the song from, I think. I've got about nine albums by Sonny Terry and Brownie McGee. This is by far the best album they ever did that I've ever heard. And uh, I ended up being parted from this album for about 20 years. Uh, my girlfriend's dad, back when I was a teenager, he heard this album, uh, you know, when we were playing it over at my girlfriend's place, yeah. and he borrowed it. And that was the last <laughs> I ever saw of it. Anyway, I kept saying to my girlfriend, when am I going to get that album back? She says, Dad really likes that album. <laughs> so I knew I, I knew, just leave it there for Holy a second. Anyway, I knew uh, I knew I was dead in the water. I'd never get it back. So anyway, eventually when I got started getting into computers and stuff, I found it on eBay. Yeah. And and I bought it and it cost me like fifty bucks or something because it's long deleted. Yeah. But it's their best album, I think. And uh, anyway, it's sort of an advantage in a way because the version that I got is in true stereo. The one I had originally was in mono, so oh, yeah. I'm one up anyway. <laughs> So anyway, Sonny Terry and Brownie McGee, uh, Brownie McGee was from Knoxville, Tennessee. Sonny Terry was from Green, Greensboro, North Carolina. Sonny Terry was blind. Brownie McGee was uh, crippled. And they played together as a duo for over 40 years, and they bickered and argued on stage. And they finally parted and went their separate ways in the mid-1970s. They toured and played all over the world. I saw them at least five or six times. Uh, most of those times I saw them in Vancouver. Yeah, they played here a lot. I did see them in, in I think, in Portland or somewhere, I too. I think I've though. got like four or five different posters from them from yeah. playing in Vancouver. Anyway, they, they kind of popularized the blues because mm -hmm. they, they were true blues. Everything about them was true country blues, but they were very commercial, staying in the genre of the blues field. Yeah. But they were very likable, and, and their songs were wonderful. And, and that kind of stuff. And there's uh, a nice photo on the back of, of them as well. Ooh! There we go. So much for that 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, really a great duo. And I, they're both gone now, but I miss them yeah. a lot. And they were just wonderful guys. Apparently, the Rhythm Rockers cut a record in 1964 under just the name of the Rhythm Rockers called Ceylon, Ceylon. And I'm I think that must be Honey Bee by Muddy Waters originally, because he goes, sail on, sail on, little honey bee. It's got to be the same tune. Well, I have a record of 45 at home, which I should have looked for, but uh, by the Rhythm Rockers. But I think there was a Canadian river, uh, Rhythm Rockers as well. And shall I, say, I should check and see if that's what it was. I wonder if it is. Same yeah. If it is, you should have brought it. it. I know, I know. I just, I never even thought about it. But uh, <laughs> yeah, anyways. Shame uh, on you. Yeah. Anyway, anyway they, they backed up uh, pretty much everybody that came through Oakland that was in the blues vein. People like L.C. Robinson, Charlie Musselwhite, Sonny Rhodes. And they were actually backing up Jimmy Reed the night he died. That's right. And after their Rhythm Rockers album came out in 1980, they did a tour of Europe. But they never wanted the big time. And they settled down to become the house band at Eli's Mile High Club in Oakland. Troy Key ended up buying the club after Eli was murdered by his it, mistress. I think it was in 1979 when he bought it. Okay. And uh, anyway, Troy Key said in a quote, they said to him, well, why aren't you, you know, trying out for the big time and why aren't you pushing harder and all that? And he said, I couldn't ask for nothing no better. I couldn't be no happier than I are just <laughs> playing here. So Troy Key yeah. actually he died of cancer in 1992 in Oakland, California. He was a great artist, and one of the earliest things he did back in his singles period for Warner Brothers Records is he went out on tour and uh, played on the same bill as Eddie Cochran and Richie Valens. And uh, he changes the words to Richie Valens' tune, Framed. It's actually a Lieber Stoller tune that was originally done by the Robins, who became the Coasters. But he changes the words a bit. And he goes, uh, Troy Key goes, I deny the charges of robbing a liquor store. I deny the charges of carrying a little pearl-handed 44. I deny the charges of vagrancy too, but when the judge came down, poured whiskey on my head, turned around to the jury and said, convict this man, he's drunk. What could I do? I was framed. <laughs> well, it's interesting that, that um, he'd be on tour with Richie Valens, because Richie Valens used the same drummer that Troy's key used. Yeah, Earl Palmer. Earl Palmer. That's yeah. right. Uh, yeah, as a, as a. I wonder if there was some kind of tie in there or something. Well, he probably got to know all those yeah. guys being on tour with them and all that. 
Anyway, um, even though he denies it, you know, in Troy's Keys version, you know he's the owner of that little pearl-handed 44. Because oh, yeah. he says it with such affection. Yeah, that's You right. know it's his. <laughs> anyway, um, the version of Framed by Richie Valens on the Delphi record label, 1958, this is the version that Troy's Key learned the song from. Can I get the album out of there? This is the uh, version that Troy's Key learned the song from when he was on tour with Richie Valens and Eddie Cochran. Framed, Richie Valens. I was walking down the street minding my own affair when two policemen grabbed me unaware. They says your name Henry, I says, why show? He says you're the boy I've been looking for. Charged of robbing a liquor store. Denied the charge of cat little pearl handed forty four. I denied the charges of vagrant said two. But when the judge came down, put whiskey on my head, turned around to the jury and said, Convict this man, he is drunk. Or what could I do? I was playing. Once again, I gotta say, I think I like Troy's Keys version better. Oh yeah, the guy sure. is a great artist. Very obscure, but very great. And uh, they did do a second album in 1982, which, for some reason, I don't know why, it just doesn't have it. It's a lackluster, uninteresting album, and Troy's Key only gets to sing two songs on it. He sings one song called Annie Maybe, which is passable, and then he does. It should have been me, the old Ray Charles tune, and it's not passable. Right. <laughs> and there's a kind of a 50s shot of what they look like in the, on the back cover there. And that's them in front of the uh, Eli's Mile High Club restaurant at, and, uh, and uh, club in Oakland. And there they are the way they must have looked in the 50s. Anyway, a great artist, Troy's Key and the Rhythm Rockers. My name is Michael Wilmore. The show has been Rockinitis. My guest was Rob Frith. Thanks very much for watching. Rock and night is. Oh, doctor, doctor, tell me what to do. He said, don't stop rocking, son, till you are through. He said, doctor, doctor, what's the matter with me? He said, the rock and night is won't let you be. Try to stop rocking, but I've been told Rockin' Itis has got my soul hey. 